Am I back time again? Got no idea what's in these. Let's find out. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you're first time here, and also check out the links below for anything you're interested in. Just look in the description there, the links down there. This looks suspiciously like a programmer of some kind. I saw someone had one of these on a video, and so I thought I'd get one because it looks like it could be handy. It's a little CH341 programmer, so you can actually plug in devices in here and read them, and I think you can program them too. And it's got a bunch of adapter devices here as well, put on different footprints. Some BGA footprints on there, WLC SPI 16, 93XX adapter, okay, some dip fittings of some kind, KFN 8, 6x5 and 8.6, 45XX adapter, okay, I guess that's just the number of the adapter, is it? So I don't know if I'll even use this, but it's, it's kind of handy to have these kinds of things in your arsenal because you never know when you might come across something which this will support but some other programmer won't so it's always handy having all these tools available to you so if you do come across something which is a bit more weird than usual then you may actually have a device which can do it because it's got some options but there's no instructions here with it I'm going to have to try and figure that out yeah, you've got jumper pins down the side here and the settings you have to do for I think it's voltage settings on it as well is that a switch there? it looks like it's a handy little thing to have so I thought I'd get one because it wasn't that expensive it was pretty cheap but obviously you need the software to run with it and that sort of stuff I think that's Mention a video, but let's look for a CH341 programmer. This is version 1.7, there's different versions of the board. Well, these arrive quite quickly. Some Cat 5V Ethernet cables. I think I ordered these like a week ago. That's pretty quick. Is that half a metre or something? Made my own cable stuff in the past, but sometimes you want something flexible, right? So it's got like a stranded cable rather than a solid core. And the stuff I've been making has got a solid core, which is okay. But if you're in a situation where it gets moved around a lot, there's a lot of vibration, that sort of stuff, like maybe in a vehicle, for example, solid core can be problematic if it's got any flex in it, it'll gradually fatigue them and they could break. I haven't had any problems with that yet, but it's something that's keep mindful of. And if you're saying which is moved around a lot, the solid core cables don't last so well, so these stranded core ones are better. At least for that situation. So I did a review not long ago on this Fluke 175, which was given to me at no cost by Fluke, and I was really happy with it. It's a really good meter. But I also noticed that inside it had the capability of having the backlight. The backlight is installed on the meter, it does that you have a backlight in there, there's no button for it. So, and then not long after that I actually realised it would actually be nice to have a backlight because a situation came up when I was doing something, I was working on a motorhome, and I was using this meter and it was a bit dark and I was having trouble seeing the display. So I've purchase myself a button membrane to convert this thing into basically the 177 so the 175 doesn't have a backlight 177 does have a backlight it's also 179 which has got like a temperature option on it as well so I purchased a button membrane to replace the original one and I've got to obviously then make a hole in the case here there's an insert in the mold which may mean it blanks it to make a hole or it actually allows a solid wall depending on the insert um, I'm not sure if they've got like a plug on the casing of here or not, or whether it's an insert in the mould which changes the case design. Could be either way, I can't tell yet. I can see a line around there, but it could be either way. Anyway, if it's a, a plug on the case, that'd be great, but I don't think it is. Because I can then use one of these. I can screw a hole in, put the membrane on. So we're doing a video in the future about this, I expect, where I actually do the modification. I might make a nice little standalone video. I've created a meeting. So this is an original AEM part apparently. Although interestingly the backlight button here seems smaller than I thought it was going to be based on the mark on the casing. I thought it was going to be a bit bigger than that. 
Unless it's smaller than one 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 seven as well. Anyway, maybe it's because it does a, a fluke seventy seven and one seven seven one seven nine is what it's listed as. Maybe it's based on the seventy seven instead, but uh, that's fine. I'll just drill a smaller hole. So it's me, I don't care. I'm going to throw in a couple of these clips at the same time. These are like some generic Chinese ones, I think. I'm not sure. There's no branding on them. I thought if they were Fluke or Pomona's, they'd be real. Anyway, they'd be branded, but there's not. The postage on these things was as much, in fact, the postage was more than the actual buttons. Hmm. Diodes. I wonder if these are Zinner diodes. We could obviously read the codes of the diodes, or we could just get a diode tester. Yep, that's what I thought. Zinner diodes, 3 volts Zinner diodes. So I purchased some China and I got some from, I think it was MF14 as well, I think it was. I can't remember. It all arrived at the same time. Looks intriguing. Okay, what is this? Okay, I'll swing to this. It's a colour chart. So the idea is when you do video or photos and stuff, you can have this reference chart and you can check your colour accuracy on your camera or your screen or whatever you're using in order to make sure you get an accurate representation. Maybe your white balance is off or something like that, or you've got the wrong colour settings for your your lighting, you know, like 5,000 Kelvin versus 6,000 Kelvin or something like that. And so this chart has you know, got a grey profile here and obviously various colours here, primary colours. So you can actually check that this looks correct on video to check your settings. Excellent. I should have got one these ages ago. And here is the actual colour chart for it. it. tells you what the colours actually are in CI and SRGB so there's a reference so I've got this recorded in video now for eternities in case I ever lose this piece of paper which is quite likely also it means if you're watching this video you can check that colour chart and see if these match up to these you can check your colour accuracy on your monitor assuming I've got it right in the first place on my camera So there'd be a playlist over here for you to watch, there's another one over here, there's a subscribe link right there, and there's a Patreon support link just there if you want to help support the channel and help me to buy more stuff. Catch you later.